Yeah, sometimes love can be a little tough. That's why you need the love doctors. Love doctors, you are the love gurus. I am a 30-year-old woman who is so confident and so successful, I like to think. But I'm embarrassed to say that when I'm around my crush at work, I melt and become a blabbering fool. I don't know if he sees me this way, but I want to come off as the confident and competent woman that I know I am. How do I get over being so nervous and blubbering around my crush? Oh, that's awkward. I doubt he really notices. He might just think that's who you are. Yeah, I guess if he's never seen the confident yeah. uh, person side of it, he just assumes you're the blubbery one. Is that what she said? Blobbery, blubber, blabbering, blabbering, and blubbery. Blabbering and blubbery. Yeah, okay. <laughs> blubbery um, is like whale that's fat. That's what I thought too. And I'm like, great. Now I just insulted say, this woman. I don't know if that's a compliment. Like, don't worry. If he only knows you as the fool, that's all he thinks you but are. He might not think she's a fool. Uh, who She's you just are. chatty. Yeah. Well, I would say, too, some guys actually find if he knows you're, like, confident and successful and, mm-hmm. you know, great around the office, but you're kind of shy and, and, you know, tongue twisted around him, a lot of guys actually find that, like, endearing, like, nice. You know, not nice. I don't know the way to put it. Like, attract, like... Oh, you're into me. Oh, I, like, like, it's a clear like sign. Like, oh, man, this girl, she's into me. This is sweet. So maybe that is a, a positive thing. Yeah. It is a positive thing. I don't know how you would get over it, though. So Alcohol. Maybe. See? But you can't Booze. just drink every day at work. Yeah. I've tried. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so confident I drink at work. I've tried. No. <laughs> you would have to. I think you just need to get it in your head. Either he likes me or he doesn't like me, and it shouldn't matter to me because then you're putting too much pressure on this guy. Look, I think you need to put the pressure more on yourself. This is obviously your future husband, the father of your children, and if you mess this up, you go down a completely different road in life that doesn't involve what was meant to be. You're putting too much pressure. Oh, did I? Yes. Whoops. Whoops. Hey, I I like his advice. (laughs) Love doctors, love doctors. You're on the love gurus. My boyfriend pulled me aside the other day and said, I have a early Valentine's Day gift for you. And I was so excited. And he gave me the most hideous purse I've ever seen in my life. I don't know where he could have got this from, but it is so gross. And he's so proud of it. Do I tell him that it is terrible? Yes. You do, huh? He is going to continue to buy you ugly items. Yep. So you just have to say, it's not really my style. Tear the Band-Aid off. Yep. You just tell them. It's, you feel bad and you feel ungrateful. I remember one time I was gifted a purse. I liked the purse, but I didn't like the color. It was pink. That's not my thing. I'd rather have a black purse. So I said, I appreciate this purse, but did you save a receipt? Because I prefer this in black. I don't like pink. It's not going to go with my everyday outfit. I'm not going to use it. And it's just a waste. There's a dollar amount too to anything. I feel, you know, obviously if something's not expensive, you can just yeah. take the gift and whatever, move yeah. on. But my guess is if this is a purse that it's somewhat expensive and there's a dollar amount where you're like, why would you want to waste? I'm, I would say more for me in the aspect of like, why would you want to waste that money on me on something I never am going to use yeah. unless it's around you. And even then I'm don't like it because I'm just doing it to make you happy. Do you really want to spend three, four hundred dollars on that? It it is kind of awkward. It is, but it, you're probably both right. I think it's just get what you want. Mm-hmm. You have the receipt for this. Mm-hmm. And finally, love doctors, love doctors. You are the love gurus. Another Valentine's Day one. I have been with a guy for about six years who has pretty much botched up Valentine's Day every single year. And I've been very clear about ways he could have done a better job. I don't want to say it's a make it or break it year, but is it safe to say that after this many years of coaching, if he's not able to do it this year, that maybe I walk away? You should walk away from you because Valentine's Day is about love for each other. Why aren't you planning these dates? If you're so good at planning them, what are you doing? I get if it was your birthday. But it's not. It's Valentine's Day, baby. Yeah, and you're in it at six years mm-hmm. already here. Let's be real. You're not gonna break up over no. there. Like you're yeah. in it. So you, but this is your seven then. This, so this is you've you've accepted the fact the guy sucks this, at this point. Well, this is just part of who he is at this point. This is part of this person that this isn't his thing. This isn't what he does. I'm sure there's other parts that he does wonderful that have kept you around for six years. Probably. I mean, six years isn't like a. Well, I kind of like this guy. Still feeling it out. <laughs> Yeah, I think you just need to, you know, this is how it's going to be every Valentine's Day. You become the planner. There you go.